The Fire HD 10 Plus tablet is, in my opinion, the best budget tablet on the market. So this is a Amazon Fire tablet. You can get a 32 or 64 gig model. I think there's mainly 32 gig out there right now. Has a 12 hour battery life, wireless charging, which doesn't come with all uh, tablets. Has Alexa built in, four gigs of RAM and an octa-core processor. So it can kind of do a little bit of everything and you can get them now for less than $100, which is pretty amazing considering the pricey tablets that are out there. Now, what does this tablet do and not do compared to newer models, right? So this is the 2021 version of the Fire HD 10 Plus, uh, which is why it's so inexpensive. So we're gonna go in this video, we're gonna review um, how this tablet works, why I think it's the best budget tablet, um, and I think I can convince you that it is, um, and you're gonna want one after this review. So I did get a Amazon bundle deal uh, with this tablet uh, for about $115. I got a wireless charging station, uh, docking station for the Fire HD 10 Plus along with the tablet. Um, and right now the tablets themselves are around uh, $86, around that range, so less than $100. Um, and I will put an affiliate link um, in the description below. Um, so feel, feel free to use that, um, it helps the channel. Um, and you know, when I got this, you know, I didn't know how this would function compared to my iPad Pro, right? So that's what I'm used to. I'm used to having the pen, being able to take notes, and the iPad Pro, it does a lot, um, but I'm a PC user and, you know, transferring files can get complicated. Um, so I wanted an Android tablet just for the ease of use. Um, and in terms of, you know, quality of packaging, quality of device, um, as I use this, um, I didn't think it, it felt cheap. It was lightweight. Um, it does have a plastic casing compared to new models, which maybe have aluminum or some kind of metal casing. So um, there is that, but otherwise it, it felt like a very normal tablet to me. It didn't feel cheap at all. So after the unboxing, I can say, uh, you know, first impressions, um, again, lightweight. The screen was a little reflective. I don't know if that's normal or not um, compared to a, a uh, iPad. Um, so maybe if you're trying to read in the sun, uh, it won't turn out so well. So, uh, definitely this is really good for maybe indoor reading or in a shaded area. Um, so the, uh, Amazon Fire tablet itself comes with a USB-C charger and a, uh, plug, uh, which is nice, uh, cause a lot of times with, with new equipment, you don't even get a plug anymore. Um, just folks just trying to cut costs there. Um, so you do get a USB charging cable here, um, along with that wireless charger. In terms of the Anchor wireless charging dock that came with this bundle, um, honestly, it's a good brand name. So uh, I just figured it would be good and it's gonna work well. Um, has this mesh material on it. So it actually has a kind of a sleek modern look. Um, and it has a little indentation there where you kind of set your tablet and you can set your tablet in it horizontally, vertically, it's gonna charge either way. Um, so again, uh, for a reading tablet, this is awesome because you can just put this on your bookshelf on your desk and you can just pick up and read and, and go. So uh, this tablet runs a Android operating system. Um, it's a custom one for Amazon Fire tablets. Um, so you can't use the Google Play Store. You have to use the uh, Amazon app, app Store. Um, so it is very limited. Um, but of course, in this video, we're gonna show you how to basically turn this into a Google tablet. Um, so that is one thing you really need to do in order to make it a good budget tablet. Um, but initial setup is really easy. Just log on to your Wi-Fi. It's gonna upgrade the operating system to the newest version. And then um, it's gonna just do some initial setup. Um, but you know, it was very easy to set up. You can log into your Amazon account. Um, so you have Alexa built in, you can track your orders and, you know, uh, scroll Amazon and order stuff as you wish. And then if you do uh, charge this horizontally, so if you just turn it and put it in the charging dock, it will automatically enable Echo Show Mode. Um, so this is the Amazon Alexa uh, Show Mode. So um, this is actually really cool because it shows you uh, the weather, um, you can change the clock type, you can, you know, ask it to play music. So if you have this set up in your garage, basically you can just talk to it, have it play music for you, um, have a Bluetooth connection, audio out. Um, so it was actually pretty nifty that this has Alexa built in. I th thought that's actually a, a plus for this Android tablet. All right, so this is only the best budget tablet if we have Google Play Store installed. So in order to do that, um, we gotta do a little bit of work. So if we scroll down from the top, we go to settings and we're gonna see our settings here. Let me adjust the brightness so we can see this a little better. And what we wanna do is find device options, click on that. 
and then click about this fire tablet if you click there you're going to see serial number and what you want to do is hit that about five times you'll see a little thing pop up on the bottom of your screen just keep hitting it and then once we've hit it enough it will enable developer options and then we can click on developer options and we can turn those on it'll say um, this is dangerous that's fine just click yes and then we can enable usb debugging and we can say okay there um, because we're gonna need to plug this in via usb and hack this fire tablet but before we plug it in via usb we need to install some software on our pc so let's do that first prior to plugging it in so a quick disclaimer before we start hacking our Amazon Fire tablet. Um, there is the potential that you could do this completely wrong, break your tablet, and then it's useless. Um, so uh, do be aware that this um, has to be done correctly. Don't unplug stuff while you're doing it. Um, it can break your tablet. Now, in order to get the software you need, the Fire Toolbox software, we're at version 32. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description below. But essentially this software will um, do everything for you on your Amazon Fire HD 10 Plus. Um, so you can see all the different Amazon Fire tablets this software works with. Um, and if you scroll down, um, please read through the instructions. Um, but there is a download link where you can download an executable file. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is, uh, you know, install this first prior to plugging in your Amazon Fire tablet because this software installs some drivers on your PC um, to make it work. So we're gonna download the executable file here. This is for the Fire HD 10. Um, and then once you download, um, just go through the motions here of installation. Everything's pretty straightforward here and then click launch. And it's installed both the drivers and the software you need to run the program. So it's going to ask you to plug in your Fire um, HD 10 tablet via USB. And once you do that, it will recognize it and you're good to continue on. So I've connected my USB-C cable that came with it to the PC. Uh, a pop-up will appear. It's going to say, hey, you enabled USB debugging. Do you trust this PC? I'm going to say always allow. I'm going to say okay there um, to always allow USB debugging with this PC. And then once we plug it in, we are ready to do some work on our PC. So I do recommend um, doing the tour uh, with this software just so you can see all the different features it comes with and all the different modifications you can make to your um, Amazon Fire tablet. Um, however, the main thing we want to do here is install the Google Play Store. Uh, I'm also going to remove the uh, lock screen ads because I think that's annoying. Um, so I can just have a regular lock screen. So it's going to look and function mostly like a regular Android tablet. However, we'll have the Google Play Store, we'll have the Amazon App Store, and we'll have Alexa built in, which is pretty cool. So we have that those voice features. Um, and with the Google Play Store, we can also get Google Assistant and all the other um, awesome uh, voice enabled uh, features that come with that. So once this is plugged in, um, just click on Google services and you're going to want to install Google play. So you're going to see that here. Um, I've already installed it, so there's nothing for me to do. Um, but if you just click install, it will do it automatically. No hassles there. You can also install Google assistant and for lock screen management, you can also remove the lock screen ads by just clicking run. There are a bunch of other features I, I don't really care about. Um, Google assistant. I didn't even do that because you can just install it through the play store now that you have it. Um, you can, you know, install uh, custom uh, boot screens and stuff, but uh, I don't think any of this really uh, adds any value to me, at least. So I unplugged the USB cable and my Amazon Fire tablet. I can see that the lock screen ads are gone, um, but I see this weird kind of advertise uh, banner at the top. And in order to remove this, we're going to go to settings real quick. We're going to go to apps and notifications. And we're going to go to Amazon app settings and then click on home screens and then turn off recommendations and discover um, as this kind of adds a advertising banner at the top. And then it's time to log into the Amazon app store um, and then just type in your username and login for your Google Play Store account. And then you're able to download all the useful apps to make this device awesome. So I did want to game on this a little bit. So I did uh, connect my Xbox controller. This is the Xbox One S controller uh, via Bluetooth. So I just went to settings and Bluetooth um, and it found the controller just fine and it connected uh, to the Fire tablet uh, for gaming purposes. Trying out Steam Link, um, the connectivity seemed okay. It was maybe a little laggy, but uh, you know nothing too noticeable. 
Um, and, you know, it can handle, you know, playing any of your Steam games over your uh, local area network as long as you have a robust router um, in, your, in your home. So I want to uh, enable extra storage on this. So if you just open up this little slot, there's an SD card, micro SD card slot on the Fire Tablet. I'm adding a 256 gig uh, micro SD card to it um, to expand the storage space on the device so I can add my books, magazines, what have you. Um, the storage setup was very straightforward. It just moves the whole operating system to the storage device. That way you just have a ton of room. Um, so it, it walks you through this step by step. And just to note, if you have it plugged in via USB, go to settings and make sure the USB is used for file transfer in order to, you know, move your books, videos, etc. onto the device. With N64 ROMs, you can run MuPen64 Plus, um, and it runs uh, Mario 64, GoldenEye 007, StarCraft, and, you know, with that Xbox controller attached, you can just use that via Bluetooth and play your games. Overall quality here was fairly good. Um, you know, not perfect um, with larger games, more intense games. Uh, there is a bit of lag if there's a lot going on, but overall, uh, most of the games that I wanted to play uh, seemed very playable. And I think the fact that you can play StarCraft um, on this tablet uh, with an Xbox controller is, is actually pretty cool. So with that expanded memory, I just moved my entire magazine, PDF, book, library um, over to the tablet. And um, in terms of reading apps, there are several to choose from, um, but overall everything is very responsive. Um, I even put my cookbooks on here um, and comic books. And, you know, with a tablet like this, um, you know, even if you're cooking with it, etc., and it gets dirty, I don't care. It's cheap, right? Um, and you can buy more than one for the price of uh, a normal tablet that's out there. Um, and the color, uh, brightness, it all looked really good. And, you know, I was fairly happy uh, for what I paid for uh, with this tablet. You can even use this tablet as a second screen. You can download something like Space Desk. And with your laptop or computer, just install the Space Desk console uh, from their website. It's free and you can enable USB mode so you can plug it in via USB. You can use Wi-Fi too, um, but I'm usually on the move and don't have that kind of accessibility. And then you can just drag and drop, use it as an external monitor, acts as a second monitor. It's great for Microsoft Teams, watching the game while you work. Um, overall, this is really impressive to me. The camera itself on the device is not the best. Um, you know, it's functional, doesn't work very well in dark environments, um, but it works good enough so you can use it with ChatGPT, with AI programs. So if, again, you're in the garage working with this and you wanna upload a photo like this to uh, an AI program and then say, hey, help me with this, um, it's able to do that. So within ChatGPT, it's as simple as just uploading the photo from your device, asking a question like, hey, here's a Spitfire engine, how do I fix it? And then it will tell you what you need to do. Um, another cool feature with this tablet is if you have stuff like OpenAI ChatGPT4, um, you can actually talk to it as well. There's a voice option, um, and that's really handy for um, using another AI assistant beyond Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. Can you help me walk through how to fix an engine for a 1960s Amphicar? Absolutely. I'd be glad to help you with some general guidance on how to fix an engine from a 1960s Ampere car. However, fixing an engine can involve many steps and it depends on what exactly is wrong with it. What's cool about this feature as well is you can go back and uh, read the transcript uh, from everything you talk about uh, with OpenAI. So this is also handy on the tablet and this is all for less than $100, which is pretty cool. So overall, um, I think this is the best budget tablet on the market. Um, of course, you do have to hack it and put Google Play Store on there. Um, however, I mean, for less than $100, you get a uh, awesome uh, CPU, you get a five megapixel camera, you get, um, you know, uh, an audio jack port, USB-C, wireless charging, you get a dock, um, and it even becomes an Alexa show, which is really cool. Um, I thought that was pretty neat. So it shows you calendar events, all that. And although the quality is subpar compared to my, you know, Apple Pro uh, tablet, you know, with the pen, um, you know, this isn't supposed to be that. Um, this is supposed to be a budget tablet um, for reading, right? And it has that wireless charging, which is hard to get on tablets. And this is something you can pick up um, while you're on the move and, and get information. And, uh, you know, the OpenAI app is also useful, useful for that, right? 
So you can talk to your AI assistant while you're doing stuff in the house, whether you're cooking, uh, working on stuff, etc. Um, so overall, this is my favorite tablet on the market, and I hope this review was helpful to you so you can see all the different features and things you could do with it. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And as always, thank you for watching.